Hey folks, it's Ben. I'm here with uh, a project for me. I typically take mowers in and I uh, fix them and find uses for them and use them around the place. But I think this mower here, I'm actually gonna try and sell. It's a 22 inch Artisan, Briggs and Stratton powered. It's built in Canada, as you can tell by the large Canadian flag. It's like a regular three and a half horsepower lawnmower. 22 is a big blade, honestly, for a 3.5 but uh, obviously whoever built it thought it was cool. There's no dead man control, neat. <laughs> and whatever discharge protector it had on it is now gone, but it is a discharge mower, so you can pretty much use it for everything. It's a slightly lower end mower, just based on the fact that the wheel height adjustment is based on you bolting the wheels in a particular location. So uh, it's, you know, you gotta unbolt every wheel to change the height. So it's not the convenient one bar does it all anymore. Uh, I've already done the preliminary diagnosis on what's wrong with the mower. Uh, it doesn't start, obviously. Uh, so I took the air cleaner off and squirted gas down there and uh, no go. And then what I did is I took the spark plug out, which when I went to take out was already loose. In fact, it's loose now because I haven't really put it back on. And we've got a no spark condition. That being said, now the spark plug itself is in fairly good condition. So man, these 22s are crazy large. Usually I'm working on 20s, 19s, 18s, something like that, but this is just big. Uh, it's got a cool dipstick. The oil is really clean. Like it's uh it's not usually they're black and crappy. This is clean. So uh whoever took care of it did like it. Like I said, we were having spark issues. Let's just go ahead and re-verify that. I just don't start wailing on this thing and it actually starts again. So we'll pull the plug out, put it here. It has uh, another older feature for this type of mower is it's on motor start. My Honda has that too, but most mowers now have you at the pull cord up at the controls. So we've got our spark plug grounded against the block. And we give her a go and it's easy now because the sparks, uh, plug's not in it. And we're just not getting anything. Guess if I were smart, I'd change the plug and try again. You never know when those things break, right? Take two, new plug. Still no juice. And we're on the right path, so next is coming off this cover. There should be three bolts holding this thing on. Or we're gonna have to take care of because the throttle linkage is also bolted to the top cover here. Here it come. Nothing fancy here. Sweet, so we got it apart and we'll blow out some dirt that's in there. That's uh, where the head needs to breathe. Uh, we have our ignition coil. Um, doesn't appear to have any sort of dead man, so that's not gonna have drunk grounded out and killed us there. Uh, maybe there off the carb. So we'll double check to make sure this isn't shorted out and killing our spark too, right? We don't wanna really dig too far in. My dad always likes to sand these down uh, if you're not having a spark condition. And that's fine and I will, but it actually won't solve a no spark condition. That's for sure. The ratchet seems quite healthy. And since they match, those are probably the stock pieces there. But let's double check the carb over here and make sure we're not sparking ourselves out. Uh, we wanna make sure that if that's unplugged, we should be able to get spark. If not, but if this got dented, and the goal is, is that when you go to turn it off, uh, it shorts out the machine and, and shuts it down. So it uh, looks like per the wire here that comes across the plate, this wire here, we may have been shorting ourselves out because that's off and this is on. So let's uh, put the recoil back on and try it now. Wouldn't that be silly? Jeez. I am dumb because look at this. I removed that from the, the contact off of that uh, the carburetor placement there, the throttle, and now when I pull on it, and it's not bolted down, so we'll see how this goes. You might not be able to see it in the camera, but there's a spark there, so we'll clean the spark plug up, make sure the gap's correct on it, and we'll throw it back, put the lid back on it, 
and uh, we'll give her some pulls and see what we get because it is creating spark so there's no need to dig into that system um, if we're making spark right but we do need to clean that up before we do that nice tip for you playing the home game for the bolts that come in really dry just take some oil I'm using this three-in-one electrical motor oil just put a drop on them and what that'll do is it just doesn't let it catch up and uh, but you're not really violating the integrity of the tightness of the bolt either you're just making it so that a it'll come out nicer next time and B it's not just gonna squeak its way in there so just do that for all the bolts if it's coming out dry maybe aces so with it actually having spark we don't know why this thing doesn't run anymore so let's Obviously, it's going to be in the carburetor, maybe. I don't know, maybe it does run and just sitting here helped it. One thing we did have to fix, though, is a throttle cable. Now, this is a cable. Um, it's rust-free. See, there's no rust on the thing, but it's very hard, was hard operating, and that's because there was this big kink in it, and these cables don't like to be kinked. It's actually kinked right here where uh, it ties to the machine, so it either got caught up on something or whatever. So I've unkinked it as much as it needs to be, and now when you run the throttle, which is just up in back and forth here, that operates smoothly, and that's what we're gonna want for the carburetor, obviously. Uh, but don't kink them. <laughs> they like to be nice and smooth. So with that, we'll reattach it. This is the rustiest part on the mower, as I show the rusty part of the deck here. Um, honestly, is the cable hold down, so uh, we're in great shape for that. So let's reconnect this, and then we'll see if we can tweak it to make sure uh, that it's gonna go where we need it to go, and then we'll do the gas test, and we won't do that on the table up here. I don't wanna 22 inch more running on the table, we'll, we'll take it out to the garage floor. Now what I mean by adjusting is there's actually nothing you can do up here. This is just, it's, it's start versus off, right? But we can tweak where this cable sits on this, this little guy right here. So if we loosen up this screw, we can now move our cable back and forth, right? So I can, by default, move our location as to where our carburetor is. So if we push, bring this down to stop, we obviously need it to be touching our kill, whoops, our kill point right there, right? But until we actually hit that point, uh, so we have the throttle in the start position. So we'll move it to stop. Like we want the motor to stop at that point. We'll put, bring this plate back and then we'll tweak the cable. So we just want it to click right there. So now if we lock that cable, when we say stop, it will stop. And if we move it to start, nice wide open throttle. It's exactly what we want. We'll pull it down when we're mowing. And when I go stop, it should short it out and shut the machine down. So in theory, that's set. Let's uh, hose this puppy down just because I'm feeling that way today. And squirt some gas. Sweet. Put some fuel in the tank. With the throttle in the start position, that'd be wide open throttle. I'm feeling optimistic. I don't think I might even need my squirt bottle, but I'm gonna put my hair and protection on just because I'm feeling good about it. And let's put our foot on the place foot here. It's also written in French. And uh, let's give it a pull, see what happens. Probably nothing. The coil's a little lazy. Nope. I wonder what that banging noise is. The deck, the uh, blade was secure underneath the machine, but anywho, open up there, little guy, and it has that auto choke so that when the engine gets vacuum, it opens the choke. See if that helps us. Cutie. Okay, number one, the recoil starter is having angry. Mentioned it was lazy, but it's also that shaft that goes into the uh, recoil is under lubricated. Not surprised, it's dry. That's all right, let's go ahead and the carburetor doesn't need anything. It looks like it's fine now. Now that the system's been charged, it'll probably run mint. But we do have to fix the recoil part. We'll probably do it right here. The squealing that you hear is actually from this ratchet right here. 
Um, it's not that it's broken, but there's a shaft coming up from the motor that spins inside, and when these two get dry, they get loud, and that's what you heard. So to fix it, we just need to pop these screws off. These screws are holding down the, I wanna say debris cage, but really the finger cage. Keep you, stick you from, keep you from sticking your fingers in here, because that's where the fan blades are. And once you have these off, and I'll set them right here on the deck, usually it's a little nicer. There we go, so that's off. Now this <laughs> has this weird coating on it. I don't know if that's dirt. Yeah, it's just dirt and grease. The, the balls in here, and I've got a couple videos on this, uh, the balls in here are supposed to be dry and free to be centrifugally forced everywhere. Tap, 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 this thing pops up. So this will come off as an assembly. And all this is, you can see, is the little five fingers there that fall into these five balls you see here. Now this is supposed to be nice and dry, and of course it looks like it's gotten wet. Uh, so what we need to do is dry all this out and put a very light oil in it, and that should fix that issue. It's wet, like water wet is the issue. So that's not cool. So let's get a rag and dry all that out, put it back together. With the cup now clean and this little ratchet nice and clean, set it on here. One drop, one little drop of oil, let it roll all the way to the bottom and put it on top. And this will give you nice spinning action. Okay, that's all you need right there. The balls, also clean them, these little ball bearings, and put one in each of the little compartments you see here. They need to be clean and dry. They operate under the principle is that when this thing starts spinning, they get out of the way. But when you go to start it, see how they kind of, they'll catch, one of them will catch and you'll be able to pull start it. But as soon as it starts running, whoop, they get right out of the way there. So that's cool like that. Now I've got to clean this little seal. For this, I've cleaned it, especially on the inside. That's really the important side. And I take a drop of oil, put it on the tip of my finger and wipe the seal here because it does rub technically uh, along this. Tap it down a little bit so that it sits, and then we'll put the top back on. There's not really a lot you can do with this. You can reset the spring so it pulled back, but these pieces fit into the square of the top that you see up here, uh, and it's just folded tabs. It kind of just so long for the ride. Uh, I also have another video on that one as well, but if it does get slow to recoil, you can kind of tighten the spring. Back together again. Got the air breather on it now even. It's, uh, oops, I forgot the little cap there. Added a little bit of Lucas lubricant to the uh, motor case. Maybe that'll help slow up some oil consumption. It's got uh, French and English, so this is the start side, full throttle. That's crazy. Our recoil should be fantastic now. not spraying out oil right now. I'm wondering if it's all that fuel cleaner I poured in the thing. I'd been burning off and that's why it was coming out of everything. But two things more to sell, right? A, it's dirty. We got to clean it. And B, the blade's probably not very sharp. So let's take that off, check it for damage, sharpen it, and we'll clean the deck while we're doing it. 22 inch mower. Have I mentioned this thing is huge? Man. Since we're going to be putting our fingers in the danger zone, let's go ahead and take the spark leader off there. And uh, looks like we just have one one bolt holding this girl on. Uh, yeah, she looks like she needs a little attention for sure. But the underside of the deck is clean enough. Nothing I can make better there. The seal looks fairly okay. So let's pop the bolt off and run her through the bench grinder and get this thing all nice and clean. Lots of videos of me sharpening blades. I love to use the bench grinder, but you can of course use a hand grinder. You can use a hand file or even a special tool, which I might have one hanging around here, which is also you can put on a drill and also sharpen. But long story short, there's no big problems with these blades. They're well balanced. Uh, a little bit of a ding on that girl there, which I was able to kind of get out. Uh, and this one is actually smooth, so we've got the nice sharp edge on those as well. Kind of hit it with the uh, back end on as well, kind of give it a nice sharp edge. So we're good on that. It's gonna cut grass. Ow. Yeah, that's good there. Um, put a little lube on that one, even though it doesn't really have a lock wall. It does. It's well used though, but. That'll keep her on there if we crank right on her. 
Like I said, the bottom of the deck is good. Next we have is to clean it. I think I'll hose the wheels off. <laughs> it might be easier for those. Um, and let's go test fire it one more time. Blade sharpened, good oil in it, plugs good, carburetor seems to work, throttle works. Honestly, I think this is going to be, if it didn't have the kill switch so low to the low idle, it would probably be a killer low idle machine, kind of like Mother Tiller over there. But anywho, let's go fire it up. Start. Over here. But here it says, right hand pull apparently. Looks like I forgot to tighten that bolt right there. But anyway, so that's a quick fix over repair of a free lawn mower that apparently didn't have any issues with it. Although we did squirt some cleaner here and there, fixed the recoil start so it ran nice, sharpened the blade, cleaned it, um, put some conditioner in it. There's some sea foam in the gas that'll help the carburetor stay nice and fresh. Fixed the throttle cable, lubricated the wheels, which I didn't show, but you just put a drop of oil on each one and it rolls real nice. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Subscribe to my channel, Turbo231, for more, more videos. Let's not look down there and see all those down there. Okay, so we've got that going on. Please subscribe and you guys have a good day.